here we are, our destination for today. Glen Campbell's Museum and Rhinestone Stage. That is great. Take a look at that mural. <laughs> we just went out to his grave out in Billstown, Arkansas. He's buried in a family cemetery with his parents and extended family. I hear they have a lot of his costuming in here and a lot of his guitars, so I'm excited to see this. All right, my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. As you can tell from the beginning of our video, we're in Nashville, Tennessee at the Glen Campbell Museum, and hopefully we'll get to show you some of the cool stuff inside. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. So they're telling me the museum's only about two years old, but look at this, they have one of his Grammys on display. It's a Lifetime Achievement Award. 2012, and this is his Academy of Country and Music Lifetime Achievement Award. And then this whole case over here are awards. Various Grammys, songwriting awards. Look at all those. Those are the Academy of Country Music, Top Male Vocalist, Single of the Year, Gentle in the Mind, Album of the Year. That's called the Cliffy Pioneer Award, Academy of Country Music. And that's his Grammy from 2014 for Best Country Song, I'm Not Gonna Miss You. All the way till the end he was making music. Now if you saw my video when we went to his grave, you'll recognize some of this stuff. This is his early childhood. It's representing the town that he lived in, Delight. And Bill's town's where he's buried. They actually have his birth certificate up there. And then a photo of Glenn when he was a little boy. Let's see if I can get the light to work with me here. Now that is Glenn Campbell's very first guitar. He was four years old when his father ordered this very first guitar from Sears Roebuck. He even signed it. You can see it's got the, the imagery of like a horse and everything down there. And then he signed it right there. Wow, that's where it all started. Even broke, split down the middle. You can see that big crack right there. Wow, that's where it all started for him. It was built in 1939. Wow. The Plainsman is what that guitar was known as. That is Glenn's Red Rider BB gun. Held on to this from his early childhood, no matter where he moved, he always made sure to have this piece of home and history among his belongings. You can see the little red writer on the end. There's his cotton bag. He used to make a living or earn money in those early days by picking cotton for $1.25 per 100 pounds. He often made it his goal to pick 80 to 90 pounds a day. And there's Glenn playing with his band for the grand opening of a little store. There he is behind the microphone. There's a family photo and he's identified everyone in the photo. He's over there on the far left down here. And that's all dedicated right here to the wrecking crew. And you can see up here he was part of the wrecking crew playing for the Beach Boys, even joined the Beach Boys when Brian Wilson wanted to quit recording. Well, he wanted to keep recording, but he didn't want to tour and record, so Glenn joined the band as a replacement for one year, and then got a solo deal. There he is with Elvis, Frank Sinatra. Look at Glenn's acoustic guitar. It's even got one of his picks still there. Ready to play, his old Martin. That's really cool. It says this was a Martin D18 acoustic guitar from 1958. During his studio sessions with the Wrecking Crew, he frequently played this. In fact, he played this particular guitar while recording Frank Sinatra's Strangers in the Night and the Righteous Brothers Bring Back That Love and Feeling. Wowza bedowza. That kind of gives it some merit, doesn't it? <laughs> That's my favorite Frank Sinatra song, too. Look at that pick that's still in there. That's just too cool for me. I love that kind of stuff. 
And then that black guitar is his Tysco T60, heavily modified. One of his favorite to play in the studio with the Wrecking Crew. Most famously, he played it on Elvis's Viva Las Vegas album. That handle in it. Here he is in the studio with the Wrecking Crew. And there he is with Dean Martin. The Wrecking Crew was a crew that Phil Spector originally assembled of the best musicians in Los Angeles for studio sessions. There he is with Cher. I believe this is the design that was on the backdrop of his show. This is really neat. Quite an experience they have laid out for everyone here. You can just sit here and watch him perform if you want. Now this is really cool. This is dedicated to him being in the movie True Grit. I know I've said this before, but he used to joke that he's, his acting was so bad that out of all of John Wayne's movies, that's the only one John Wayne got an Academy Award for because Glenn made him look so good. He's joking, but this is a great movie. That's a John Wayne commemorative rifle. And they said everything in this museum is original. So that's Glenn's script from True Grit. Dated August 26th, 1968. And here he is with John Wayne on set. And there's his LaBeef True Grit Texas Ranger hat. It's pretty cool to see that. If you know the movie, you know that hat. There's his spurs from True Grit. And he received a Wrangler's Award. It says the Western Heritage Wrangler Award for his work in True Grit, inducting him into the National Cowboy Hall of Fame. And it says these guns were the gunslingers. The set of two guns were used by John Wayne and Kim Darby on the set of True Grit. Handguns were given to Glenn as a gift and they hung proudly in his home for years. That's pretty cool. The star guns from the movie. So the top one was Rooster Cogburn's gun, that was John Wayne's, and Kim Darby used the bottom. So that was John Wayne's, and that was Kim Darby's gun from the movie. Here's a case about his television history. Television and movies has him up there in Rockadoodle. <laughs> he did one of the voices of Rockadoodle. And there's a letter telling him that they're sending him a press kit for rock a doodle and they said they wanted his character to sound similar to Elvis Presley. And there he is in Norwood, Joe Namath, and Kim Darby again. A little bit more grown up. He was in True Grit with her. There he's with Joe Namath. And there's a script of Glenn's from being on the Donnie and Marie show. And him performing with Donnie and Murray right there. That's one of his scripts from the Glen Campbell Good Time Hour and a music box from the Smothers Brothers. And of course his star on the Walk of Fame. Here he's with John Wayne on the Good Time Hour show. These are all photos with different celebrities, people he worked with, and different gifts from them. You can see over here he's got sunglasses from Elvis. They were photographed together at a wedding in Las Vegas 1970. Through the years, Glenn and Elvis shared a profession and personal friendship with Elvis, even giving Glenn a pair of his gold sunglasses. There's Glenn with Johnny Cash and his buddy Alice Cooper. Look at that bunch. Johnny Cash, Merle Haggard, Buck Owens, and Glenn. And then Glenn with Minnie Pearl. And that is a cowboy hat gifted to him by his close friend Toby Keith. And Glenn's pair of Gene Autry's cowboy boots. Glenn enjoyed a friendship with Gene and the entire Autry family. After Gene passed away in 1998, Gene's wife Jackie gifted Glenn a pair of jeans, red, white, and blue cowboy boots with bluebird imagery. A 
And these are all photos with presidents. He's got photos with George Bush, Ronald Reagan. Looks like letters from them. And then down here, Gerald Ford. And some of his mementos from being on Air Force One. Including the menus, the welcome guide. And there's a harp that was gifted to him. There's a picture of him down here with Willie Nelson and Robert Duvall. That's kind of cool. Here's a gold lighter gifted to him from Dean Martin. Gold Dunhill with a 14 karat gold jacket with his initials D. I'm going across the top, it says. And then just up above here, you have a lighter gifted to him from the Duke, John Wayne. And it says, stolen from John Wayne. <laughs> I love it. There he is performing with Steve Martin. Young Steve Martin. There he is with Mr. T. Oh, look at all those guitars of his on display. That's amazing. They said this was mainly all made possible by his wife, Kim. She loaned all of this. 2001 ovation he was one of the first people to really put ovation on the map also there's a 2011 ovation an ovation electric guitar 12 string you can see up here on the head it's 12 string there's his ventures model guitar his moss right there he is in his house with all those guitars on display. That's pretty cool. And then a whole article about him and the love for ovations. Ovations are known for having this rounded back on the guitar. On this black one, you can kind of see the rounded back to it. The ovation's known for. And here's some more of his guitars. This one over here was actually named after him. It was called the Ovation Glen Campbell Balladeer. Surprisingly, I didn't notice any of these being gifts from anyone. It wasn't like uh, sometimes people love a guitar because it was gifted to them from a famous friend. It doesn't look like any of these were. Now look at all those costumes. Those are great. Not only do they have them on display, but they have a photo of him wearing all of them above it. So if you look at that one, you can see him up here wearing that one. And then this blue one looks very light blue here, but in the photo, it's got kind of a deep blue to it on stage. And then this gray one, that's very interesting. It's got pinstripes to it. He's wearing that one right up here. This is an absolutely amazing museum. You really gotta come check this one out for yourself. You gotta see this stuff in person. Now take a look at this. That necklace, I, I just hung out with Rick Nelson's son, Gunnar Nelson. He has an, a necklace exactly like that. That's really cool. Makes me wonder if he got it from, if it was Ricky's. But there's Glenn up there wearing that. He's kinda got the necklace buried a little bit, but you can still see it in there. And if that one looked pretty familiar to you, that's because that's one that he wore on Midnight Special in 1975, one of his most famous performances. And then next to it, they have his Scottish tartan, the kilt and jacket. <laughs> it's from when he performed Amazing Grace. That's a very cool collection. Now look at this, they have various music banks over here you can come over and play anything of glenn's that you want off of here just choose the album the song and it says greatest guitar player to ever play and those are all actual guitars hanging from the ceiling it's pretty cool and going down the back this is acknowledging how important songwriter jimmy webb was in glenn's career 
He wasn't responsible for all of Glenn's hits, but definitely a lot of them, and definitely ones that you would know, like By the Time I Get to Phoenix, and I believe he wrote Galveston, Santa Fe. There they are together. Oh, look at all this. This is great. Pretty good sized museum. This is talking about all of his children and his marriage. Glenn's wedding present to his wife was this guitar. <laughs> and there's her, his wife Kim, and Glenn's outfit for the 2003 AMA Awards. That's a photo of them wearing those outfits right there. And this is all talking about the I'll Be Me documentary. Talking about him having Alzheimer's and living and retiring with Alzheimer's. There's some of the concert tickets. His laptop teleprompter for the lyrics that he would use. That was his music stand. And the lyrics on the left are from I'm Not Gonna Miss You. That's the one that he won Best Country Song in 2014 for. And as we go over here, you see some old posters with him. Ironically, there's the, I just mentioned Rick Nelson. There's Rick Nelson, George Jones, Glenn Campbell. And here you have some of his personal medallions and jewelry. And this is really cool. This, they have his wedding Bible that he and Kim were married on. That's important because when they had their first date, it was a blind date. And he got drunk and got out of control a little bit. Kind of tried to make the moves on her and everything and she was not interested in him after that at all but when he asked her out again she said the only saving grace he had was that he he said a prayer before he ate and she knew that he possibly could be saved so religion played a big part in their life there's his set list from playing in london and a 2001 world series ring because he was part owner of the arizona diamondbacks and would often perform the national anthem there. I did not know that. They beat the Yankees in that one. And here we have some handwritten lyrics for Dear Dad, the song, a letter to his wife, and his prayer book. Being a country boy at heart, he loved to collect guns and even had his own commemorative guns. So this one on the bottom has an image of him down there. Commemorative gun and the one in the middle is a gift from Jimmy Webb, it looks like. And the top is one of his collection also. And then here's his costume from the cover of Rhinestone Cowboy. That's the Rhinestone Cowboy outfit. That's awesome. <laughs> It says many of his belongings were stolen throughout the years, including this rhinestone cowboy suit. Fortunately, the creator of the iconic costume, Manuel, has been able to recreate an exact replica with Glenn's original measurements. Okay, so this is made by the same guy, given to Glenn, but not the one. Dead ringer for it, though. It says Glenn, one of Glenn's favorite rooms in his house anywhere, whether it be Arizona or Malibu, was he loved the entertainment room with his pool table. So that is his pool table from Malibu. You even have pictures of it from the house, I'll show you. 13 ball side pocket. And he was apparently one heck of a golfer. You can see his golf clubs and all kinds of mementos from the golf tournaments, decanters that he collected, even with him on it, right there. Glenn Campbell at the LA Open. His trophy from the Bob Hope Golf Tournament out in Palm Spring. There's one of his golf scorecards. You can see on this bag he's got it signed by Jerry Vale and various other people. Even from the Glen Campbell Open, 
And here he has a little putter gifted to him from Jack Nicholas. Little midget putter. I actually never knew about this. Apparently at the end of his life, he went to a care facility. One was called Abe's Garden. It was an Alzheimer and memory care center. And it says on his first day at Abe's Garden, it was actually here in Nashville, he took with him a miniature guitar that he had bought his last tour in Ireland. Glenn stood up in front serenading the other residents with a private impromptu show. Glenn thanked the residents for coming before he took a long nap on the couch with this guitar. And apparently he took up painting also. They have pictures of him here painting that picture right there. It's a structure called the hippocampus. And that's here you can see he had 70 albums and more than 500 songs. And since these were donated by the family, a handful of them are actually signed. So you signed that one, and you signed that one, and this one down here. This place was awesome. Now let's go look at the gift shop. Absolutely fantastic t-shirt collection to choose from. So I'm gonna get a pretty cool magnet here, postcard for Patreon, and that shirt.